Okay, so I can introduce you in your uh, new booth, I guess, right? Yes. Since this way, I'm Artin with the Spray Gunner, and I'm here visiting the Credex Colors, and that's their booth, and that's their uh, coffee man, I'd say. Yeah, yes, the president. And the, yes, coffee maker, uh, company mascot. That's about and, it. And the owner of the Credex Colors, of course, yeah, the Craig Kennedy. Here with me to answer <clears throat> some important questions, and well, let's start with the most important one, I think, is the logo. And I got to ask, uh, so what's, what's wrong with green? What is wrong with green? Why is it not green? On the, yeah, it's almost rainbow. Uh, being Irish, I'm a self-loathing Irishman, and I just couldn't have green in the logo. No, um, my parents started the company in 1978, and uh, the logo it looks like a rainbow, but it just doesn't have a green in it. Um, that's a good question. Why? I really can't answer that. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to start, start with something important so we can yeah. move into the other things. Uh, big yeah. news of the year was recently uh, announced that the Outer Air brand is pretty much done. Yeah. It's taken off the market for good, that's the plan. Yeah, um, so Outer Air came out in really the late 90s and then we, we reintroduced it with a much stronger uh, or larger product assortment in 2002. Then it was our first uh, real push into the automotive paint market. Uh, after AutoWare came out, <clears throat> about four, five, six years afterwards, came Wicked Colors. And Wicked Colors was originally brought out to be more of a new school t-shirt paint. Uh, originally only came out in larger sizes, but <clears throat> the acrylic we were using for the Wicked Colors turned out to be actually a, uh, a better film former for hard surface mm -hmm. compared to what we were using for AutoWare. So a few years after Wicked came out, we upgraded the AutoWear to be the same acrylic type as Wicked because, again, it was better for hard surface. And so after that, eventually the two lines started to have a lot, a lot of redundancy and similarities, um, especially in the AutoWear transparents, the regular Wicked colors, and then through some um, of our retail locations that wanted to expand on the Wicked color assortment to include pearls and metallics, we borrowed those colors from the AutoWare line and being the same acrylic resin, mm. it was the same color, like you know, the aluminum, pearl blue, metallic silver. So that started to create confusion. And then as we grew the, the past decade with the in invention of the, uh, the Createx illustration colors, the AutoWare colors really took a back seat and then came out the Autoborn Sealer and Candy 2.0 and these kind of had their own brand identity. So what we did is to eliminate the confusion and to kind of decrease the bandwidth of our catalog is we merged AutoWare into Wicked, which that process had started years ago. And in the background, what we're doing is also creating the room for a new school generation of water-based automotive paints that we plan on coming out with uh, in the near future. And so AutoWare might be folded into Wicked, <clears throat> But what AutoWare was, as far as uh, a water-based automotive paint, our, our best foot forward for automotive water-based, is alive and well. And we, we have plans for a new line uh, coming out in the near future, as I just said. And uh, the first step of that project was merging AutoWare into Wicked. Now, for, for me, it's really helpful more <clears throat> as the dealer because, you know, the question we answered time after time, which, which paint should I use for hard surface? And there's no right answer there because they both yeah. kind of fit yeah. and they're both good. So, uh, And most of the good colors, they merged into the Wicked as the Craig mentioned, but some of them, and this is a tough question for my customers I get often, what's going on with the Spark Lessons <coughs> and the color shifts and when we will see them back? Yeah, I love the Spark Lessons. Um, when, we, when we first started moving the AutoWare line truly into the automotive and going to, to SEMA, and doing uh, automotive, uh, you know, work with or m work with the automotive magazines is always the sparkle essence that were the colors that we showcased. They're kind of our glamour pearls. Um, for those of you who don't know, the the, the sparkle essence were a uh, a pearl flake mixed with a transparent toner that kind of gave a candied pearl mm -hmm. look without using dyes, so you didn't deal with, like bleeding and those kind of issues. Now the original the original sparkle essence used a holographic pearl. And the source of that pearl manufacturer kind of went through some disruption, I meaning the pearl was hard to get uh, for reasons that I'm not going to like, talk about, but it wasn't a big deal. But one of the pearls was used by the federal, the, the feds for the, the, the dollar bill. And so we had a harder time getting our hands on it. So we shifted the type of uh, pearl used to make Sparkle Essence. That's why if you really know is we came out with Sparkle Essence too. And so some colors like Porn Star Pink and the Midnight uh, Nightmare Blue, they still look good as Sparkle Lesson 2, but they didn't really have that nice color shift to the original version. So 
we, we, we're bringing back the original sparkalescent pearls and colors um, with that automotive project that I kind of referenced in the first questioner. Um, and so sparkalescent is coming back in its original form, but we didn't want to just continue into Wicked uh, because we have good plans for that color and we care very much about the sparkalescent line. Yeah, it's too bad it's not going to enjoy the Wicked line because even the, the you know, name is just used. Yeah. Imagine the weekend porn star, porn star pink. Wicked yeah. Porsche yeah, would be made. I mean, it would be really popular color, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not going to happen, guys. I'm sorry. We've gotten in trouble with that name, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, for Wicked, so get expansion from, uh, from Auto Air. It's also got new opaques, which mm -hmm. are not the same opaques from Auto Air. It's completely no. new, new animal, I would say. It's uh, acrylic retained <coughs> paint, really great coverage. <coughs> we tested those, they're amazing, and yeah. I had a lot of customers ready saying how well, great they are. Being a little different, so the acrylic retains while well, the rest of the weekend acrylics. Is there any specific of mixing those together? Like if you normally use like 4030 or 4050 with the weekend, you don't really use it for right. breaks. What's, what's so the regular wicked colors, like the other Kratex airbrush colors and the illustration colors, is a straight acrylic resin. It's a you know white fast pigments with an acrylic resin. The wicked opaques is an acrylic urethane. The mm -hmm. resin is a blend out of the bottle. So mixing like 4050 and 4030 to create an acrylic urethane, that's not required with the Wicked Opaques. So a bit of a shift there, but we wanted to make the paint um, cover as well as possible and be a little more durable and, and, and usable for plastics and modeling. Um, when Wicked first came out, like I said, it was really for the t-shirt artist, but it's grown more into the hard surface realm. Um, again, modeling, automotive, that's really where you find a lot of wicked being used. It's the most universal paint you guys have, right? right? Yeah. Can be used in many. And then um, the, the pigments themselves came from another line of paint we, we still make called Scenics, which is a uh, more of a, a theme park paint. It's from Muraling, what they call uh, theming. And we brought in like a pyrrole red, a pyrrole orange, really cool bismuth vanadit yellow, and had a cool like uh, daylight blue, which is similar to the Laguna blue, but a little different, and then a green. And so we wanted to bring in those pigments into an airbrush uh, formula. Mm -hmm. So the Wicked Opaque gave us a chance to introduce some new pigments that weren't available in any of the Kratex lines. And then we made it out of the bottle an acrylic urethane that's a lot easier, or just easier to use because you don't have to thin it. Um, and the modelers and a lot of the hard surface people mm. are gonna like that. Awesome. So here, here, here from the from the source, and I'm just gonna continue with the, this topic a little more. So uh, yeah, different <coughs> mixture, different reducers. We discussed in the first interview we had back in the spray gunner office and uh, back to reducers because some things changed. Your technical data sh changed, and there's a Always. great chance actually a great great website uh, credextech.com where you can get all the fresh information. Um, but just out of uh, our conversation here. So we have four types of reducers. Ah. 4011 now is go to one. So it's yeah. recommended most of the, if not all the technical. Yeah. 4011, we first came out with that, I think in 2003. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're back to basics. And we, we never got rid of 4011. It's gone through some name changes. Uh, it used to be high temperature reducer when there was a 4010, which was a, a weaker version. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> with, due to toxicology changes, um, the toxicology regulations, and, uh, and due to our starting increasing use of water soluble urethane resins, the 4011 became the go to uh, thinner. 4012, which we used when Wicked first came out, um, it doesn't work well with the Candy 2O colors. It makes a mm -hmm. lot of bleeding. It can seed the colors in solution, meaning if you add too much, you get these little dark specks, which is like a conglomeration of the dye with the resin. Yeah, and the, <clears throat> the 4012 promotes that, whereas the 4011 doesn't. And then it was uh, Steve Gibson, the artist, who r really brought this to our attention, uh, that when you, when you add 4011 to the paint, it doesn't seem to penetrate down as much into the underlying layer as much as when you add 4012. So let's say you're airbrushing uh, direct to substrate. Well, you might not notice it. The 4012 is going to be okay. But let's say you're applying uh, like more of a base coat or you want the underlying paint to dry. You put down a coat, you wait 10 minutes, and you want to put the next coat. The 4012 is actually working against that, pro uh, that process because it seems to be diving down more. It's re-wetting that first coat of paint, whereas the 4011, not being as aggressive, is not re-wetting or kind mm. of so the, the underlying coat. So there was toxicology changes that were precipitating our need to get away from 4012. 
And then there was our evolution of paint technology with the urethane resins and the Candy 2O that made the 4012 no longer real viable go-to thinner. So we, at the beginning of last year, we went back to 4011 as our go-to reducer. Now we have two other reducers. Uh, there's a 4013 reducer, which is isopropyl alcohol with mm. de, you know, deionized water. Um, the toxicology on it came up flammable, meaning there's like shipping and restrictions. <clears throat> if it hadn't been for that, maybe 4013 would have been our go-to reducer because it works well, but we're not gonna make a flammable product our go-to reducer that can't like ship overnight. Thank you. The biggest reason before 4013 though was due to some specific uh, toxicology and booth permit regulations in primarily California. So mm -hmm. we needed a paint that could you either for a reducer they could use their paints and fit within their their booth permitting pro permitting process and the 4013 is our answer to that 4020 um, we've had this for a few years now it's it's acetone and it's flammable it's never been designed as a go-to reducer and when it came out we were finding we really wanted to find a reducer that would cut against humidity for people painting in the summer in Florida. And, <clears throat> yeah and we're, we're, we're committed to it. Uh, a lot of people sometimes add 4020 straight to the paint and we don't think that's the best way to use it. We like using the 4020 as a cocktail into the 4011 and you could add 5%, you could add 50-50 mix, but <clears throat> add it to the 4011, it doesn't get too strong, but it helps the paint evaporate and dry quicker in a, in a humid environment. And um, for all of you that have 4012 and you're like, well, I wanna make it work more like the 4011 or I wanna make it work with the candies, how do I do that? If you mix 4012 one to one with uh, demineralized water, you know, like um, you know, uh, bottled water, it's gonna be much less strong and be kind of similar to the 4011. Not, not exactly, but it, it'll make it so it doesn't seed out the candies, it doesn't penetrate as deep down and it works better with the uh, the 4030 and the 4050 or the you know the UVLS clears which are our urethane resins. So 4011s are go-to. 4013 kind of similar to 4011. It's flammable, but it, it helps with some compliance issues. That's kind of like a subjective preference for airbrushing. Mm -hmm. You know, some people like it more than the other. Uh, 4020 acetone, strong product, uh, best used as a cocktail for 4011. And then the, uh, the 4012 is on its way out because of toxicology changes. And as we've been evolving the paint line, the 4012 has been a little too strong for things like the Candy 2O and the urethane resins. And, and that's, that's what's going on there. All right. And let's continue the reducers conversation. I'm going to move this a little bit. So yeah. uh, as you may know, some of the customers out there that really like those little I think it's one one ounce uh, mm -hmm. cups are there for mixing. They just use an airbrush, put the paint in, put reducer on top of it, and kind of work with that. You know, blow yeah. back. Uh, I'm just gonna you know, show the proper way of how you recommend it, how we do it. Uh, so I'm gonna have the candy, which is one of the hardest colors, I'll say, mm -hmm. to mix because you need to if, if you do mix it, you can <coughs> just reduce it with the 411. You have to use any 4030 if necessary. I mean, it can improve your flow. Uh, or for the 50, the new product, but it's not necessary for candy. It's kind of necessary, so we're going to put uh, five parts. Have now, five. one thing I've learned from Chris Arpin: um, a lot of times he starts off with the 4050 and then adds the candy to. I know, them. but it's it's easier to measure because yeah, five parts of it was just for me. Yeah, that's the way okay. we mix it, and uh, so we, I agree. It's easier to have the bigger part first and then add a little bit when you can measure it. Well, a lot of times we're working with Chris, we're working with a spray gun, and it'll be like six parts 4050 to one part Candy 2O. Um, the Candy 2O are concentrate dyes, and even at a one to one ratio for airbrushing, it's pretty strong. For airbrush technique, uh, where you really want a lot of bleeding and they like mm -hmm. real fire and they want the colors to bleed into one another, that's a great combination. But if you're painting or just even airbrushing with the Candy 2O and you want it to not have a, such a propensity to bleed, mm -hmm. I think a one-to-one -one ratio is a pretty good starting point. Okay. But subjective preferences, like the whole Createx line is intermixable and there's not one right ratio. There, there's no question we, email, we talk about more than thinning and reduction. Mm -hmm. And the reality is you can reduce as needed, but when you start doing excessive reduction, 
add in small increments, you know, add it into a cup, mix it as you go along. You know, where, where people in the past have had a hard time with uh, over-reducing our paint, mm -hmm. it was they have a little bit of paint, they go right into the airbrush cup, yep. and then they just dump in like 4012 and they mix it, and, they, and then the paint kind of shocks through the pH and it has a mm -hmm. hard time breaking up. So just subjective preferences still rule the day on reduction and just add in small increments and uh, usually you'll be okay with that. And since you mentioned that, just so no next step, they're going to call yeah. us and say, hey, the paint yeah. is bad and all those things. So that's why we encourage you guys to use the right way to mix the paint, prepare the paint for your uh, for your needs. If you're going to use it for spray gun, it's one way. If you use it for airbrush. Mm -hmm. I know some people getting annoyed there by you know constant changes in the, the technical data yeah. sheets. That's the evolution. So, you know, it is. As we, we learn, learn more. we are learning. You're learning. We do we'll test with all the paints in our place in the spray gunner, and every change it kind of makes sense. We try it. Yeah. I mean, we started with mixing of time, time back for me, mixing one to one candy with 4030, kind of get a lot of 4030. Now, adding, like you said, seven parts, I can spray it. It feels normal, and there's <clears> nothing <throat> wrong with it. Yeah. So, just test it I and mean, check it and it all makes sense especially with reducer I mean totally understand what's the uh, difference between the 4011 we tried it we learned it and you know the, the clumps you've been talking about I've seen this myself so yeah we had this problem and uh, yeah just right mixing back to it so we have five parts to one and I have uh, 4011 here it's actually a convenient squeeze bottle so I'm gonna eyeball it around I'd say between 5 to 15 percent is what we want to have right which is optional. Now, for, for like airbrush, um, most artists are going to add 4011. When you're using like a, a spray gun with Candy 2O, we here at Kratex, it, we don't reduce it ever. It's just Candy and the, the, the 4050 carrier without reducing. So again, like uh, that's a subjective preference. None of these paints have to be reduced, but most are going to work better reduced. And um, you know, so we talk about the tech sheets and they talk about change and, and some people can say, well, you're always changing things and I, I get that. But much like an artist is going to improve their work and, and, you know, offer their best to their clients, we're going to be unapologetic about trying to push what we're doing and getting better. And if we have to change the tech sheet because we've learned a better way, I'd rather do that than say, well, no, we already said it this way. And people are going to say, well, why are you changing all of a sudden? I'd, I'd rather deal with the naysayers than not put out the best information for our, our paints. Okay, so you should understand we are, as a, again, as a dealer, as the retailer, we got to change all the listings as well when the changes come up. And that's painful. It takes time. So we kind of not get angry, but we you know, have to really analyze if it's necessary. And yes, most of the time it's really, you know, following the new kind of uh, tech. That's why I put the whole site for it, the Cratex tech, where all the fresh information always dropped. Even we can be, you know, delayed at some point, just, uh, you know, the listings, just uh, get it there, the fresh information. But anyways, with fifth, uh, which uh, mixed the 4050, waited to 4011, what do you recommend? Five, 10 minutes, it and then... Yeah, about well, five, 10 minutes. And what we're doing is we're breaking down surface tension. So, you know, um, the, the alcohol in the paint, meaning you know, the, the, all these reducers are in alcohol, when you're adding it to the paint, you're breaking down surface tension, and that is going to improve flow and a leveling. And this is more prevalent, more noticeable when you're using like a, a, like a, a larger airbrush or mm -hmm. a spray gun. Um, it, it's recommended all the time, but if you're, if you're laying out a base coat, that's really when you get the advantage of breaking down that, allowing the surface tension to get broken down. And this m waiting after you mix the paint before you spray it, it's not just a Kratex thing. It's any paint manufacturer making water-based paints. Um, if you go to their tech schools, they're going to tell you about letting the paint acclimate after mixing the reducers. This is not an active chemical like catalytic reaction. You're still mixing uh, products that need a little bit of time to marry into one another to get you the best of their, their of why we're recommending them to go together. Okay. And there isn't like any rule of thumb for uh, reducer use? Do you recommend it for certain products in your line or any product can be used without reducer? Or? Any product can be used without reducer. Um, the only product we find ourselves really spraying without reducing is the Candy 2O when used with the spray gun. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's going to be 5 to 20, 25 percent, uh, 4011. Here at Kratex, you know, we're, we're in the spray booth, a controlled spray environment. It's 4011 100 percent of the time for everything. Mm -hmm. um, 
And you know, it's really just to how much you add depends upon what that color does and how you're trying to achieve flow or with that specific technique. What I mean by that is <clears throat> from a big spray gun to a little one, from candy blood red to candy lemon yellow, there's gonna be all four different reduction amounts. Even within the same color line, certain pigments have a different like specific gravity, and so they're gonna atomize differently at different viscosities. And so the different reductions per color comes up. We give a general guideline, and if you look at all reductions, it's always an about, it's not exact, mm -hmm. and it's a good starting point, a rule of thumb, and you can stick to that, but most people, once they learn the paint and learn the colors and they have their own subjective preferences, they're gonna alter the reduction based upon the colors they know and how they like to use it. Okay, well, thank you. I think it's really useful information, and uh, we discussed the new Wicked Opaque colors. I have the whole set right here, and we're gonna gonna solve this mystery now. I guess ah, we'll find we out the biggest secret of the year. I think it started this year or late, late, late last year. I think. Yeah. White caps. What, yeah. What's up with black and white caps? <clears throat> well, um, here in Connecticut, you might have experienced this too, where you are. We had this thing come through called COVID. Oh, um, you got it too. No, oh, really? Okay. So. <laughs> Being a little wise, but what, what happened was with COVID, there was obviously a lot of uh, need for people to make things like hand sanitizer. So all of a sudden, um, the plastic companies that were supplying us, the bottling companies, ran out of plastic cups. They ran out of plastic caps because everyone's making hand sanitizer. And then at the same time, uh, we have a different trade uh, war or things going on with uh, sources overseas for making caps. Um, so companies that might have been sourcing their caps from overseas all of a sudden are looking for a U.S. manufacturer. So while our demand for caps is growing, as we experienced a bit of growth, uh, the, the supply became disrupted and harder to get. So uh, maintaining the same color for the same cap became impossible. Maintaining even just having the butterfly cap and not just a straight screw on became impossible. So. We've done our best to maintain consistency in, in a very competitive and changing market, but the reality is it was either make paint and not bottle it or use a white cap like in the Wicked line. I hate it. I wish it wasn't happening, but it, it's just it's you know it, it's just how the world is. Uh, it's not a big deal, but that's where the white caps came from. It's getting stabilized, but it was to the point where we didn't even have black caps, and the, the companies mm. making the caps said, well, for the next four months, we're not switching our dyes over. There's going to be no black caps coming out of the factory. So what, it was white caps it was. And then okay. white caps weren't available, so then black caps it was. And we're, we're stabilizing it, but you know, with Createx, our products stay in the stream of commerce through distribution or through mm -hmm. dealer's shelves before it gets to you for a while. So it's going to take us like another year to really cycle out uh, the disruption in the, in the cap style and color. Yeah, the COVID affected us as well. I mean, the supply chain's broken many times, and not not of customers understand it. So you know, people get angry at us for not having such certain things in stock. You know, some popular products. I uh, guess things changed. I mean, what used to have like a month, month and a half in delivery now can be three and a half, four months. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's one of the things with the cups. Anything else you got as the COVID destruction? Any any other you know, problems you experience? Anything to expect, or it's all running smoothly now? <laughs> Every day is a new day. I mean, um, it, things are pretty st uh, calm on the outside, but we've had a harder time that, like any other company, manufacturing products, raw materials are not as uh, easy to come by sometimes. So, um, you know. There's nothing to expect, but internally sometimes it can be stressful uh, procuring our resins and materials. But I think we're through the worst of it. Um, but um, no real changes. But you never know. I mean, the the, the cap change was not uh, intentional. So yeah, definitely. So there's yeah. no mystery actually. Just shortage of product. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. It's Thank great, you. Great, great being here, and uh, yeah. It's a nice video. I think it should answer some of the popular questions. So thank you for having me. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.